morning. My name is Taran Chaudhary. Uh, I'm going to give a presentation on how I use the black backplane to um, reduce lot of cabling on my current project, and how you can use that, and what are the technique I use for Multium to make that happen. And please stop me anytime if you have any questions. And I think they gave me this. You get one ticket for each question. So just remind me to give you a question if you're asking me. <laughs> okay, so let's start. So the way it started is I saw the, um, we had an existing system that had multiple boards and a lot of cables. And I started thinking that, and a lot of issues with the cable. So why, I thought if we could reduce the cable using a backplane, that would be wonderful. But my manager said, well, we can't redo any of the PCBs. You have to do it without messing with anything else. So that's when I started thinking, how can I do this without re-spinning the boards? And also, I was trying to do it quick and fast. Uh, obviously, everything has to be done fast. Um, deadlines and all that, and it was not in the plan for the project. So as looking back, it makes a lot of sense to do it. Uh, it makes it easier for the assembly. You plug it in, and you're done. And, uh, easy to replace in the field if there's an issue. You don't have to go wire by wire. Um, and also take away a lot of the issues with just having a cable, building a cable, connectors, etc. Okay, so what I want to talk about on this is that what kind of system is good for having a backplane. Not every system needs a backplane or would benefit from it. So you have to have a, like multiple PCBs and things that needs to be cabled, wired in, inside the system needs to be cabled and um, kind of looks kind of like that where a lot of cables coming all over the place and um, you would benefit having a backplane where all the cables basically, essentially what the backplane will do is route the cables on the PCB. And PCB is much cheaper than the cables and connectors. Um, let's go to the next one. So here's an example. It's one of the projects I did. This is a, I had a system that had eight of these board, and there's three connectors there. I don't know if it has a, um, that has power going to different places, and there's two screw terminal that also has a, like a high power. Um, cable going to some other place. And I decided this is the one I'm going to do a backplane with. And in order to give you an idea, if I were to do a backplane with this, I would have, obviously you have to have the mounting hole, and then all those three connectors and that terminal has to somehow have to put those signals into my backplane so I can route them up to the edge where they will go where it needs to go rather than individually from each PCB. And some of the things to consider is that when you take the signal from the PCBs into your backplane, you want to make sure it trace, trace width and matches what the cable was used and the wires and all that. Otherwise, there will be heat issues or won't work. Anybody has any questions? You stop me anytime if you have any questions. And you get one of these. Uh, the raffle ticket. Okay, so here's an example. If I were to that board, what do I do? How to bring my signals into the back plane? So since those three connectors are through hole, I already know I can put those connector on the back of the board and then may put the mating connector on the back plane and then put them together so they, um, they go on the back plane like a stack board to board. But all that, you have to make sure that height is okay with your whole system. You're adding that much height, the mated connector height, and it also matches with the other connection that you wanna do. 
So that all has to work out before you even begin making sure that that will work with your system. Like for me, the height was a big issue. So next one. So what if you had, didn't have a through hole and you can't put the connector at the bottom because it's an SMT or you, don't, you cannot have that much height added to your system? So what I, you can do is have those mating connector on the side and then pigtail it, so kind of jumpering it like I did on that side. That way you're getting the signal on your back plane without adding heights or if it's an SMT part. So there's the flow of how to go about doing this. Um, first, you need to decide what board or system is suitable for this backplane. Next, be to it's kind of backward. You do your footprint for the PCBs, then the symbol, then you do the schematic, then you do the layout. So I will go each step and show you guys why it's in backward. Okay, so on your, you start an empty project with nothing, no file, and then you'll add your PCB file that's going to be on your backplane as one of the project file. And then once you have that, you start removing things from that PCB. The reason for doing this is so that you don't have to worry about if all the mounting and everything matches or not. I mean, you can go and measure, but this is like, you know this works. You want to have exact footprint and the holes all mad lined up on your um, back plane. So you go, re I'll have the next slide. So start removing things using Altium's uh, filter selections and get rid of everything except the connectors you want on your back plane or anything you want to pigtail it. Other than that, everything should go away and the mounting hole. And then once everything is removed, um, you want to make that whole PCB, all of that together as a one footprint. So you kind of select all of that and you say, okay, make this into a component so it's a part, not a board. But as you do that, you'll find out you get this error because it needs to be all primitive, not a component. Right now, those connectors and that all the mounting holes, they're all kind of like a component themselves. So you have to go and select everything and make them into a primitive first. So they become just lines and dots. And then you select the whole thing and go back and do the convert to component. component. That'll give you a footprint. And for me, it took a couple of iterations before I got, some, got it where it worked. And the way you know that it is a footprint, when you start dragging, it acts like a component. It's one part. Before that, if you would drag, you'd see the connectors are left behind. One thing's moving, the other's not. If it's all together, then you're good to go. And I would highly recommend keep all your 3D model on top of it because overall the 3D part tells you all your, um, if you're going to run into height issues, if you're going to run into any, um, you're putting parts different places where you shouldn't be, even though it's going to give you a lot of um, DRC error, but is um, very useful. Okay, now that you have the footprint done, it's time to do a symbol for that footprint. And the reason I, like I said, I started with the footprint because that tells me what I need to keep. And now that I know these are the connector I have on my footprint, I want to make a symbol that will have those pins. So I'm first, before I even go to the symbol, I'm going to go through each pin and name them and number them so that it matches to the symbol I'm going to make after this. I mean, you can go the other way. It's just easier for me to this way. So 
So now I created the symbol, schematic symbol, and that's my footprint. And one connector is representing the, one of these, and each line by line, so that matches. Uh, Anybody have any questions? Okay, then you start your schematic where you take your symbols and those two are like the connectors that you want that will go on the edge of the back plane or wherever it makes sense closer to the, their end goal in the placement. And those connectors, I put it on the edge, but depends on where you want to go. Um, okay, now, um, for me, I did the PCB file from a um, mechanical drawing, which makes it a lot easier. I already had the drawing for the system, so I took one of the plane, and that was the starting point. <coughs> So for that, you have to just start a new PCB doc, empty PCB doc, and then you import the, your mechanical drawing in DXF or DWG, and you make sure it's in millimeter, depends on how you set up. And I put it on a mechanical layer one, but you can put it in up to you, any other mechanical layer. So, it's not in order. Okay. So this is what you will get on your PC on the um, Altium. Shows you that it has that a mechanical drawing, and that was your generic PCB that was there. So you select the whole thing. So you're selecting the whole. Mm, from the drawing that you just uploaded. And then you say, make me a board defining that item. So now you have a PCB, that's the shape of the CAD drawing that I had. And then at this point, those little holes, those are my mounting holes that I already got from the CAD, even though I have my own, and then makes it easier for me to match it and put it on so I know it'll match with the plate. And a lot of the other holes, I can go and delete them because I don't need them. And these in drawing inside, those are just the way the system works. We had a hole in there so that there are some parts in the back that needs them a higher height, but you don't have to have that. And I left them there, so it's a guideline for me to know where I can put higher height. Yes? I couldn't hear you. Oh, do you mean the mounting hole? Yeah, something to align. Oh, yeah, you can, you can make your grid with the size of your... Um, mounting hole, let's say they're 3.5 millimeter apart. Then you can set your grid that way, and then say snap to the grid and you'll go. I just did it this way because we use this plate in our system, so I wanna make sure my stuff matches with that. If, we, if you don't need to have a plate or your uh, system doesn't require you to mount a particular way, you don't need to use it. Hello. I think I'm supposed to give you some raffle tickets, so you wanna come and get it? Or I'll, I can come and get it. Thank you for asking. Okay. So also I'm trying to point out that just because it's a backplane, I, you can put a lot of stuff on the back of the back plane. 
depends on where your space is. For me, I didn't have much space on the between my board and the back plane, so I was putting a lot of stuff on the back of the back plane. And like a fuse over there, some ICs. Also, once you have the back plane, you can you add things that are in your system that are hanging loose or somewhere else on the back plane so they have a place to go if you choose to do, I mean, if it makes sense. Can you guys hear me? Okay, so this is my finished, this is the front, and that's the back, and then I'm showing you on the sideways. I went through a lot of iteration on this, um, more for mechanical reason than anything else. Um, I'll tell you what, the reason why the height was an uh, issue. The whole thing goes in a cylinder. It's the housing, the enclosure is a cylindrical shape, big huge thing, and the connector wants on both ends of it. So in a cylindrical, when something's going, you can't have too much height on the edges. It has the side, so I have to be very careful with that, so. And I added some stuff on the back, some connectors on the back, some connectors on the front. Um, I had only about 10 millimeter height that I can have from PCB to the back plane. And the 3D stuff was very useful for this, 3D models. So here's my original board, and that's the board without the, um, with the back plane. So I got rid of a ton of wires. And other thing I wanted to mention is that just because I'm saying backplane doesn't, mean that it doesn't need to be on the back of the PCB. You can have something on the front also, like I did one here. So we, I had a, one of these systems had two connectors where two cable goes this way. I added this plate on top of it and then add the connector on the on this plate that's on the front on top. One of the reasons for that is that connector is very um, not very reliable. It was giving a lot of issues, and the cable is really really hard to make. Uh, the tech was having a hard time making something that's reliable. So what I did, I took the PCB file from this board and put it on another board and made that so that, so you, when you think of backplane, it doesn't need to be in the back or it can be wherever it makes sense. This is where it goes. That's the product I'm working on and this project I did, it goes into the inside this robot and it's a subsea robot. That's why the enclosures has to be circular. It goes, it has to be able to take pressure and it's sealed and the connectors are at the both end. I think we should start asking questions. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? I can show some more pictures. Sure. How do you go from, you had the footprint with the pin numbering, you, you made how you wanted your symbol to look like, how do you then create the symbol from, from that footprint? From the footprint too? Right, you had the, the footprint of your two connectors. Yeah. You, well, you, went, you said you went and added in the pin numbers so that they would match what you want. Yeah. Like. How do you create that symbol from, from that group of two connectors? Oh, you just... Like any symbol, you just have to uh, manually. I create it manually. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, there's other way. I, I have done it on this one where you can usually, like, you have a top sheet on your design. If the top sheet is done right and if you have those connection label like a port, you can make that sheet into a symbol. But this was not thought through when they designed that board. So. I just manually did it, and it was that, not that many connections, so it was not a big deal. And another reason I did it manually, because I named them so that they mean something when I'm assembling or when I'm routing, because I know from 
where to where it's going. If it's going, uh, which connection at the end, I'll show you the picture I have. Okay, so this is the original, and I see on the side is the panel with connectors, and both sides are going into, and this was a board with a back one. Are you guys, any of you looking, thinking about adding backplane to your system? I didn't understand. But you could have made Yes, that was not allowed. <laughs> that I was told you cannot mess with the board. You have to work. If I could design it, it would be all the board into one. Uh, but it was, uh, there was this fear of too much changes. This works, don't touch it. We're testing right now. And yeah, it's in the prototype phase still. So they didn't want to mess too much with it. It's just even to get, to do this was a lot of convincing. It depends on the management you're dealing with. Yes? Yeah. Were the modules mounted to the back plane, or did they go to a standoff way to like the mounted plate? They're mounted. That's a good question. Um, no. There is a plate on bottom of the back plate. But I'm trying to get a PCB made with a metal core. Then it can be the the support and the PCB at the same time. Then the PCB. They go all the way through the yeah the. Look. Right now, yes. But it would be, I um, want to do where the back plate is also metal on the merged. Okay. It's, it's metal. Yeah. Yes. But I'm looking into making that PC, back plane PCB with a metal core. So it can support, because those are like a pound each, those work. Yeah, and also adds height, yes. That was the biggest issue for me was the height. Yes? No. I don't know if I would need it. Yes, so I've used it before on the recent back Okay. Did, did it work? Uh, it works, uh, but you have to map your own pin, so if you make the same mistake you would have made just looking at two game sheets. Oh, okay. You know, if, if, uh, our concern was sometimes the connector numbering on the male and female oh. are inverted, mm -hmm. sometimes it's one to one. And so we tried to use the tool to map that out, but it wound up being for us the, exactly the same as if you looked at two data sheets. Oh, and two different. It in your brain, and say, okay, how does this connect? So we, I was wondering if there's any advice on using that tool. But well, I, I find a lot of things has to be done manual because I don't trust all this automation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do it, but you have to verify. You cannot just say, oh, it'll work. Yeah. Well, that you found out that it didn't. Yeah, yeah. I have to like triple and quadruple check just to make sure I didn't do something. So. Yeah. 
Most of the time it does work, but. Sure. Um, I would do it different in the sense that original PCB would have the top sheet where it's designed as such that I can take it and use it more efficiently and not have to do the whole thing the way I did one by one. It's just if it original PCB was designed where you can make it into a component directly, that would be more useful, but it's like, one people did one way, it's, poor, uh, it's a startup company, and get it done somehow. So there's no process, there's no standard. <laughs> Thank you. So nobody's thinking about doing any, don't have to do it this way, but any backplane, any system that you guys have that needs? Uh, yeah, we just created one, and we found the SolidWorks connector tool was very useful. Oh, really? The height and everything. The height, and they can move the board. Uh, or actually, like I said, the, the mating components to make sure, for example, the blades inserting uh, completely in the uh, clearances all works. Which is fun because the mechanical guys don't trust the Altium software. Yeah, I know. The, the component tolerances. So they kept trying to add like 20 mil gaps <laughs> using for tolerance reasons. And I kept telling them, no, just trust it, it's fine. Yeah, we ha I had the mechanical guy keep looking at it, but. So did you then uh, send them an SLT ASM out of your design and they manipulated it and sent it back to you? So the current tools are very similar to what they showed uh, with the cloud earlier, but, uh, except that it's actually, it's a combination of SolidWorks, uh, the Altium vault, and Altium, and so you put your board design into the vault uh, SolidWorks will pull your design out of the vault um, and generate its own step, uh, which is nice because I, I don't know if anyone's ever handed some of that board to the mechanical team and stuff. Uh, it takes them like two hours to open it. Yeah, they, they complain about that. It doesn't come out the same. With, with, yeah. with the tool they provided, um, it opens up in about maybe 30 seconds a minute. Um, and then, yeah, so they'll pull it in, they'll physically move your components or change the shape of your board and try to push it back into the vault and pull it open and part of the building. Um, just like all the awesome, awesome new features, there's some glitches every now and then. But, um, what tool is this? It's yeah, what tool is this? I think. Uh, solid work, call it connector. Connector? That's connector between the Ultium and this thing. They, they talk to each other, you know. Uh, and okay. there's a push message which they just show us on the 360 demo. Yeah. That's how it works. It basically use a, use a like your vault or something where they save the design. It, the both designed to be managed design. You know, like in Ultium, you have to create a design, which is managed design, so that's how it is. It's talking to the solid work. You know. okay. So you can it's just... It's called connector. So it's solid a, work connector. You have to buy the connector, and you have to install it uh, in in the in the solid work uh, as a plugin. So who sells this? Uh, the yeah, Ultium? Solid work sells Solid work, it's yeah, on the yeah, site. Solid work. You, you can, uh, you, you, if you, you use ads, <laughs> Is add uh, those uh, plugins in the RTM, you will see the connector uh, plugin there. When you add it, it will ask for the license. You know. So it's free for RTM? Free for RTM? Yeah, but it is, doesn't work without that license. <laughs> Nothing works without the license. <laughs> it doesn't work with the, without that. And you like it's not an expensive tool. Like three years ago, we uh, you know evaluated is thirty five hundred dollars or something like that. Three thousand or thirty-five hundred dollars. So, it's a plugin. It's still thirty <laughs> yeah. percent. So, what about does it come with the um, auto uh, the three D package? Yeah, it's, 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 it's is it the electricity? It's no, not sure. electrical. When, when you push that, uh, you know, uh, uh, assembly your assembly, it go as a uh, like I think a, a, a file, assembly file converted into the you know. Oh, it's Janice had that started work. Work. And, and, and it convert all your uh, footprint to the 3D. It, it, we do it fit check, we check mating check, outline check, and whatever. Let's say even even you can modify the outline 
and it go back to the solid work. With basically solid work and Veltium talk to each other. Right, right. That's, that's, that's what we do. So has anybody here used uh, solid work electrical? Oh, they have a... Uh, solid work PCB? Or no, this is for doing wire, uh, hard yes. wiring, yes. harnessing, yes. So and so yeah, we use it electrical. Like, uh, yeah. we, use we have it. The harness uh, making in the automotive. You guys use it? Yeah. No, they have a newer version that supposedly much better. It used to be really buggy, but not. But if you're stuck with solid works, no matter what, then that comes in handy. Yeah, like our mechanical people are using solid works, so that's it. So what do you guys use for um, wiring cable diagram? Um, we don't. Really, uh, our, we don't have, we're using Creo. PTO Creo. They don't have a really good harness wiring stuff. They basically do 3D wires and, you know, they just sort of set 30 inches or, you know, in this connection and then you show a uh, back view of the connector with the pin outs and that sort of thing. Has any, anybody used Draftsman for that? I, I've been trying, thinking about doing that, but I don't know if it's possible. Draftsman is hard to edit it. Yeah, it no, doesn't it's, give you it's, option. It's automated. Even yeah. you cannot edit the template. You yeah, Draftsman is, 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 is really good at a few things and seriously infuriating for other people. I'll bet you he had hair the last time and he first started with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I, I know I did. When I started this job, I had hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the, that shows you where, because of the connection all at the edges, you have to, me, I made the back plane, all the connectors on the edge, and depending on where they're going, both sides had a panel. How big is that? It's like this size, my, so I would say four foot, four feet tall. And this, because it goes underwater, so it has to be cylindrical and it's all press fit and uh, it takes a crane to get it out. What kind of pressure is it have to uh, uh, boost it? What kind of pressure is it? Oh, it's supposed to take 1,000 PSI, um, 10,000 PSI. And we just tested it, it does. <laughs> it didn't break, so that's good. Huh? Hmm? No, it's for the subsea robot. Um, I have the picture there. Um, that's a robot. This is like our transformer. It's huge. So the, the part that I showed you, that's the central system. Right, it's, right now we're testing it tethered, but it will have tetherless. It's a battery operated. Um, and it kind of gets a map of it, where it needs to go, and goes and does a job and come back. And, then, okay. <coughs> and that's the plan. It'll go inside here. It's, it's the central part inside the robot. Because it has two arms, it has a thruster that keeps it go up and down, 
and it has a thruster that keeps it go this way, and then it has a tail at the back end. Uh, the whole thing opens up like a transformer, and then it goes back in, so when it needs to move, it goes to the top position. So it can move faster, and then when it needs to work, it opens up and does the work. I don't know if you guys know ROV, it's just supposed to replace the ROVs. This oil and gas people use it. Anybody has a, a, what kind of product you guys are working on? Anybody want to share? It doesn't have to be cool. Difficult. What are you working on? Honeywell. Honeywell? What are you guys making? Quantum what? Oh, wow, yeah. That's a song. It sounds fancy. I worked a lot last morning. But this is, um, so what are you expecting to do with it? I mean, what kind of tasks are you supposed to do? Uh, it's funny, though, so the short answer is make money. Um, <laughs> well, that's for any business. There was no requirement document, huh? Uh, just now it does one of the algorithms that are actually going to work right through. So most of it's optimization based. Um, so you know, if you take a thousand problems, theory through one iteration, and see. you get to an answer. Um, so you're comparing with the standard? Yeah, so you're, you're running in parallel a thousand problems, and then you get in parallel a thousand answers out. But you're comparing it with another PC or another? Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to beat like clusters and server clusters. OK. Uh, yeah, that's a fun job, but that's, you know, I just make the boards. <laughs> so the, do you guys do the Bitcoin stuff in there? Is that the point? Do the what? Bitcoin. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no? That's where the money is. <laughs> what are you working on? Me? Yeah. I work for, currently I work for Philips, making Sonic Air 2 brushes, so. That's good. I mean, there's a little motor there. Well, and the battery. What's that? Oh, you mean Yeah, uh, no. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And what are you working on? Uh, I, I'm Okay. Mm -hmm. So Bluetooth uh, uh, advertised to the onboard or the body worn camera to turn on and just go back 30 seconds. So then when the policeman would drive back into his um, uh, parking garage, the parking garage was network connected to the main server and that video and the timestamp and the gun was pulled out and everything from telling each other's camera on, which was hopefully you know, long enough to capture whatever he did. Uh, would start his report. So the idea was instead of uh, one incident uh, causing an officer to spend his entire day writing a report, he could do two or three things in a day because it's automatically, his, 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 his report is augmented um, with video and timestamps and creates a level of. It's a lot of the activity, the time. Exactly. Yeah, so actually, uh, so my job is to like, come up with these concepts and prove them out. And it works so easy and so well. I said, oh, we can take it from here. Damn. Yeah, so now I do, uh, I do fluid management for uh, traumatic brain injuries now, uh, currently. It's our big one. But, uh, that can you say what company you're with? Can you say what company you're with? Um, my company's name is Red Magnet Design. Red? Red Magnet Design. 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 Start giving your cards. <laughs> Where, where, do you, where are you located? Uh, so my uh, uh, home uh, office is in Tucson. Okay. We have people in California and uh, Ohio. So oh, India too. That's good. So there's poor Ohio. 
Yeah, I'm kidding. It's 40 degrees of rain. But the taser thing is awesome, not just for that the cop doesn't have to, don't have to do that thing, a report, but also it's unbiased. So, so the, the, the title of this class was Cool Things You Can Do with Alton. My problem is I only use Alton about every two to three months, and when I start up again, I've got Change. I know. That's a problem. Again. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, actually, outsourcing is very cost effective. Um, so, we were actually, first time I've ever worked with the Foreign Layout Act, we've had so many projects coming in that just need to be reworked all the time. And uh, we've got a Foreign Layout guy, and I think he charges 100 bucks an hour, and in two days he goes down pretty much. Yeah, that's worth the money, yeah. Are you guys don't? <laughs> but I find that I can't let somebody else do the layout because you have to know your design and all the clearances or stress width and speed signal and all that. I mean, eventually, even if you give it to somebody, you have to review it. And you feel like by the time you do the review, might as well you could do it too. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. used to like the red, the blue. Yeah, I do. I look at it by layer personally. Like the blue, the negro, too much because those people do it. I saw that. Well, that just depends on the complexity of the layout, too. If you're doing a little consumer based stuff, they, they dim those all those layer on. I worked with a guy who used to use Eagle. He would do the schematics, and it was all, he would never specify package. He didn't care. Stuff on a 10K ohm resistor that's quarter block. I don't care what you use for layout. So the guy could do it. So for remembering LTM stuff, the thing I do is, as soon as I'm going to start and I don't remember, of course I don't remember anything, I go and print out their shortcut list, all the shortcut list, and that gives me almost like a summary. Which, and which version you are using? The keyboard shortcut? 17 or 19, 19, 19, okay. the latest. Because you start from the 19? No, I started the shortcut or change from Oh yeah, it all changes. I know. It all changes, but shortcut tells you all the things you're gonna use. I, I have never seen shortcut not having things you need. Um, I started Altium from the day they started, like ten years ago. I've been using it since then. Right now I'm using nineteen. But whenever I go back, even if it's the same one, I'll print out that shortcut list, the keyboard shortcut list. It's gotten so much better than it used to be. That's not bad. Right? Yeah, I know. Either 10K, 0402, right? And uh, I know I, had, I just did one, but like, what was that thing? And, oh, that's, you know, I have 16 customers, and which one was that? And, uh, you know, I just, yeah, I, I need like, a, like an alternate man, right? Who just takes care of this, who's all in the spot. I love that. Yeah, that's why we started with the vault. All our parts go. The other way to um, the attack those kind of issues is have a project template and don't change that. And keep right. use the same template and all your files, everything will be same in, in terms of libraries and size and everything. You have to take time to set it up though. Does the template contain your uh, job also? Yes, yes you can have everything. But, but let's say you change the design like from four to six layers, you have to change yeah. that number of layers over there. Yeah, but but right. it is standard format will, will save. What it's all be saved, yeah. Like on the assembly drawing, what so layers you needed need and all those things. Avoid the little no, it is it is very easy when you have a, a template for the output job. Only just you have to, you should know that what to change. There's a couple of things you have to change. You just have to go edit or that so set of things. Let's say you have flex board and you add a stiffener, you add a stiffener on one mechanical layer that you have to add in the gerber package or something. Those are small change between board to board. 
but otherwise the standard format, what you want to see on what layer, that is always always the standard when you have a template. Yeah. And the library helps. Yes, library. Library is the yeah. most important thing. Well, library helps. Of templates. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. So I got like a high school student or someone who's really a recent oh, wow. college graduate or a fellow right. student. But he works for a Honeywell. Okay, they have money, unlimited budget. <laughs> we don't have one, and all the electrical engineers are arguing over who's ultimately going to get screwed with that job. But um, we're actually after this last week of watching some of the other speakers who seem to be much more proficient than I can imagine on uh, Altium uh, with the new manufacturer part search and the Altium Vault. Uh, in order to keep it standardized and simple, we're actually just downloading from that ball. We really just have a select list of parameters that they need if they don't want to see that parameter in their, their footprint. And then that's simple enough you can give it to a technician or you know, an engineering student, whoever. Mm -hmm. uh, and their only job is to go through every day and get the parts you need and say, okay, well, he doesn't really care about this parameter. I'm going to leave that, I'm going to leave that, I'm going to leave that. And what's cool is, or important, I mean, we run into this all the time because we last two years, our division is a startup, so we don't have any rules or uh, systems set up in place. And so we each had our own library. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Luxury. I'm sorry. As a former engineering manager, I can tell you what it's solved that is by making the biggest screw up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is true. I just go make the part. I remember the old days when we print the, you know, uh, you know, footprint and then check uh, by the physical thing. Now I still do it by this. <laughs> I, I saw that one of the guys in the uh, he was for the Tesla, he's writing a script uh, can generate a footprint from the, you know, uh, step model or those model. He's, he's writing a script. You know, Jimmy Wu upstairs from Occupy, $34. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah, but, like I have a complicated mechanical yeah. part. Like it's, a, it's a medical uh, uh, alarm, right? Very salaries for the crews and whatever. And uh, $34, 24 hours later, it's beautiful. It's just like a car. Oh, but I, I that's don't nice. I'm to that trust yet. Those, <laughs> those people, you know, like. Like I downloaded one, uh, you know, symbol from ultra, ultra, ultra part or some, you know, the DigiKey right. start. Ultra library, yeah. yeah DigiKey start putting that part was bad. The 3D model was incorrect. Was oh, I get a lot of bad 3D so model. I, I asked my librarian, then you saw those people. Don't use it. Create yourself. We have a library. <laughs> no, yeah, this library. Free. It's go yeah, it's just to do No, but you, you already made the board and it's not assembling. Who's going to pay pay for the board? You know, no, I'm, I'm I agree with you. That's because once the like I am doing PCB from thirty five years. When the PCB footprint is not thing doesn't go any nothing works. It's a garbage. I remember the several times I've upside down. Oh, I've done it. Everybody's done the biggest problem in the initial days. Pin number one, three, you know. You still are. Yeah, you still, still are, I know. Yeah. And there's a small business owner, though, right? Yeah. I have a higher probability of making it inverted and upside down than if I can't make it. Thank you for yes. coming. Yes. Yeah. No, but when you have a, like, you know, that's that's why I'm saying, you know, whenever I say that, like, library is the most important thing. Like, if you have a wiring wrong, you can cut the trace or you can, you know, cut the, you know, drill the Well, wire. it's in the middle layer, no. You can, uh, you, yeah, even the middle layer, you can drill that. Then you drill the VI I will risk it. So you can put the wire. Are you familiar with that but sorry. Yes, we did. And, and recently we have some one, like, we have a board with 3,000 component, 18 layers. Oh, my God. Yes. This goes in the satellite. We have a one jumper wire on that satellite and we fly that. Awesome. So that's, 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 that's how it is. It, is, it depends which industry you work in. It's all, it's not. Yeah, if it's going to satellite, it's not, it's not coming back. What you use and all those things, and what, what, what you're doing in. But on the Altium Vault, or they call it Vault, which is like, there's three versions of the Altium Vault now. Uh, but there's an Altium Vault online on the manufacturer part search. Uh, and Altium claims they verified every book. 
but they're all old parts. I haven't found anything. They're old. Well, they have like capacitors <laughs> and so gates. Yeah, those. Oh, footprint. Probably. New party won't find it there. Yeah. I love it. Component, you know, you yeah. can easily. I'm a big fan of the online manufacturing database. Another thing I've noticed, there's been uh, companies that have started to use footprints I just didn't want to draw. Complex. I've actually just called the manufacturer and said, look, the part's expensive. If you want me to use it? I don't want to Yeah. But it. No, in mouse you can request, and it goes to Altium, and Altium does the drawing and sends it to you within two days. Like, I go to mouse, and it says, do you want the footprint or the 3D model? And I say, yeah, and you request, and then Altium replies back saying they're working on it. So you guys should try that. The, nowadays, it's much easier to get the footprint and all that stuff, I mean, but yeah. Because Altium does it for you, and then other places, and there's other uh, sites that has it. Like what's that? And there's a couple of sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. I, yeah, yeah. Octopart has it too. I haven't tried that. I usually go to Mouser. I look for part on Digikey and buy part on Mouser. <laughs> Digikey's pictures are much better for the connectors. You can see it up, up close, and but their shipping time is horrible. So mouse is like second day I get it. it depends on where it's located. I'm in Texas. Although I, for me, it's not mouse is that way. I order by 3 p.m. mouse, I'll get it next day. Also, if you negotiate with them, and you, and you, um, if you buy like, some kind of parts of any type, you can tell them. But the master also gives you option, like you can request for footprint symbol and all that. Yeah. If they don't have it and you request it, and the uh, Altium sends it. It goes to Altium, and in two days, you'll get the whole thing, which is nice. Especially something like complex stuff. Yeah. This is getting better. Thank you guys for coming. It was nice seeing you guys. Nice seeing you. <laughs> Thank you. I learned a lot. <laughs>